Um, next, we have R Renee Roman, a certified arborist, member of the San Diego Professional Tree Care Association and the San Diego Horticultural Society, um, as well as uh, California Native Plant Society. Talking about sustainable fruit tree care and harvesting, we were just talking about how many of us have fruit trees and different trees on our properties or in our orbits and communities that we're part of that we don't quite know how to take care of. Are we pruning them right? Are we watering them the right amount? And we have some wisdom here. Um, so tune in to get all of your questions answered. Hi, thank you. I'm Renee. I'm with the Tree Fairy. A little history about me and my career. I've been in the uh, tree care industry since the 1980s. I started out in logging and uh, timber and then moved into tree power line clearance and then into residential tree care. Uh, I've worked around the country in different locations in variety of operations. And uh, the last few years, I've gotten into more into fruit trees and sustainable uh, gardening type stuff, water collection, uh, fruit trees. Um, fruit trees need a good compost and a good mulch. That is your biggest friend with fruit trees and the right amount of water and caring for them. Um, This, the, the microorganisms in the soil all work together to help the, the plant to grow. You need them in there. We, we till up the ground and we break it all apart, but then we're breaking up all those organisms that are living in there. And we can, uh, if by not doing that, we can help them to grow better. The mulch keeps your roots cool, keeps your moisture in, and as it breaks down, it feeds the trees. Really, your yard needs to be a forest. Uh, as much as you can and, and with native plants they don't need quite the compost as other uh, like your garden plants do but they still have their compost uh, we work in all kinds of yards and stuff and we they have us rake every leaf up and we try to tell them you know the leaves are your friend of your plants and um, so if we can learn to live with uh, a little make, make nature's mess our, our friend uh, it's going to help our trees grow and do better. Um, pruning practices is a real important part. Uh, one of the things I see often is trees get headed back really hard during this, during getting ready to come into the summer months. Everybody wants their spring hair cut and they head a tree way back and then the hot suns come and then those trees get sunburnt. And, uh, and then they start breaking open. Now you got wound opens for pathogens and insects to get in. And uh, heading trees back isn't the best practice to do. But you know, we, we get, I just looked at a job today. A lady has a bunch of olive trees. They look beautiful to me, but she don't like all the olives and she wants them about 20 foot shorter. Well, there's not gonna be no green left when you bring them down 20 foot shorter. Uh, but they'll sprout back and they'll grow and uh, So as an arborist over the years in my career I there's the right way the wrong way There's the textbook way and there's what will the tree sustain and take and what does the property owner want? And what does the property call for we you know you go into small communities where everything is real tight You got to keep a tree confined and small, but there's a proper ways that you can do that without stripping it and uh, and doing it at the worst time of it could be done you know this time of year is a good time to trim a lot of your trees because especially if you're going to trim them hard your fruit trees is getting it's time to trim them and do your dormant sprays and uh, they can be done with some simple things you don't got to get complicated with your fruit trees um, healthy soil is your is your biggest friend with your any of your plants it's is it going to be the soil that gets so overlooked. People put in these a tree in this rock hard ground and uh, they give it a little bit of water and then they wonder, I don't get any fruit harvest, you know, or I don't, I don't get abundance of fruit. Um, so, and then sometimes you gotta pick your fruit off too. If you're getting too much fruit, you need to fruit thin it because you don't want a bunch of little peaches or little apples, you want some nice big ones. So you can do that and um, proper pruning keeps your veg your fruit down low and close to you so you can get to it and reach it um, our operations we try to um, 
do what we call a lot of more organic type pruning, where it's natural. Uh, we try to follow good ethical guidelines. So our trees look smooth and nice. There's branch cart ridge and collars on the trees. We don't want to be have big flat faces where we've cut the tree too deep, and we don't want big stuff sticking out. Um, so when you trim your tree, if you you know you can trim it to a friendly standard where the tree could sustain it, it's going to be happier and grow and do better for you. Uh, I'm supposed to speak for 10 minutes, but I don't know if it's going to happen. Yes. Yeah, yeah. If you yep, if your trees are drying out, you know sometimes overwatering and underwatering can look a little the same. You know, uh, your 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 soil, especially for fruit trees, should be moist but not saturated. Uh, if you live in an area with clay, then you want to you know the more organic matter you add to your soil, it'll help break that clay up. Um, so test your soil, test your plant, find out what your plant needs. Uh, and, and then if you use, uh, they have a, a sustainable water, uh, water supply system. Uh, we've been learning about that, going to some classes on it. You know, and I know the ring irrigation is better. Drip line, you got to make sure they don't plug up with minerals and stuff, but you can move that drip line out. I see a lot of people watering right at the base of a tree. And really the water needs to be out where the root zone is. And you don't want a bunch of wetness going on around the trunk of your tree because you'll get decomposing and rotting and uh, pathogens entering the tree that way. French drains? Well, French drains help move the water away from your properties. You know, and um, I guess if you need to move the water from one place to the next, but if you can recapture the water into your property and use that to uh, help it, uh, that, you know, that's what I... What got me going on everything is when I heard them saying the supply chain that we needed, we didn't have enough chemicals to grow our crops. And, and I guess you kind of always knew that, but when, when I heard them say that, I said, oh my God, what are we doing? Whoa, wait a minute. Because I, I deal with, I dump my mulch at fruit groves and people's property, ranches and stuff, because they're going to use all that stuff back into the property. Why are we not growing? And, um, and I remember as a child, farms were family farms. And then as I got older, I seen the farms dissipate into corporate farms. And so um, I think we're going to find that we're going to move towards uh, family farms again. And uh, I don't know if that answers the question. I went off on a tangent. Yes, sir. Native wildlife. Is there anything you can do with tree trimming to help the nesting native birds? Absolutely. Absolutely. One, one we're learning, always learning more. Uh, as, a, as an arborist, um, I feel like I'm as much the student uh, as anything. Uh, I mean, I have some things I can share and teach, but you know, when we're out there working, um, you know, we want to be real sensitive, especially in the spring when we know we got a lot of nesting birds going on. We had to work in an oak tree just the other day and it had an owl box and the lady was sure nobody lived in the owl box and it was a dead tree and they were going to go up and cut part of it back. And as the climber was working his way up there, though, an owl come out of the owl box, you know, and then we retreated. We didn't want to do anything more and uh, to, to disturb it, so leave it alone and then we'll wait if the tree starts becoming a threat to life or something, that, to uh, property, then we may have to do something. But we can approach it differently too though. Instead of climbing it, we might be able to bring a lift in and do minimal things so we don't disturb the wildlife around it. And look for signs, you know. Um, is there, you know, not so much here, but up in the mountains, are there squirrels living in the tree? You know, is there a hawk got a nest in here? Is, is there some woodpeckers? You know, we had to take down some trees in Julian that had some woodpeckers in them. And we called the wildlife rescue place and they said to leave them there, just leave them there. And so we did. We don't know whether they made it or not, but we did everything in our best effort to protect and preserve the life. And, um, Yes. Well, 
See, when it comes, when, when I think of fertilizing, I think of soil change. I, um, I, I know other arborists that go in and inject uh, food into the ground, and a lot of times that's chemical food. Um, I would rather, I don't do that, and uh, I know like I have people that have little small fruit grows, and then they ask me about managing them, and the first thing I want to do is change their irrigation and, and bring in compost and uh, mulch, and let's start, if we start training our soil to be what we want it to be, that's like with the clay and stuff like that. If you bring organic matter in, you're going to do more to break that clay apart than doing a bunch of inorganic chemicals to keep something alive. Well, you don't want to put it up close to the tree, um, and you, you want to have it out of the way. I know they did an experiment down in Stein's Farm, and uh, that's where I do my fruit tree. I go to my fruit tree classes at, and supposedly too much mulch will hurt a tree. You can suffocate it. So they dumped a whole truckload, dump truckload of uh, mulch right next to a, a peach tree, and they planted a whole row of them, and the peach tree with the mulch all dumped around it was four times bigger than the tree at the end. Um, and they really believed that it was because of the root cooling. During the hottest months, those roots were cool and could grow. And, and then not to mention that it trapped moisture. So um, putting, I think putting down a layer of composted stuff that's ready to start leaching into a soil. And then if you put the mulch on top of that, now you got a product that's gonna start breaking down as it goes my chipper for our company we got it set up so it chips little tiny chips so they really uh break down and um, compost better Any more questions? love your trees uh i i that's that's us we love I, everybody i am a small operation we have small i am a certified tree worker that works with me i'm an arborist and a tree worker and, uh, and then we have Bastian, he's learning the water-wise irrigation system. And then we have another young man who's apprenticing with us. And we love what we do. We, we go to work because we love what we do. And um, we enjoy the physical work of it. We enjoy the gratitude of it. We had some fruit trees we put in for a lady that had cancer. And that was going to be um, part of her treatment was when she come home and going through her stuff she was going to be looking out at her yard and you know being a part of making her yard beautiful for her you know and we followed up with her to make sure when she you know that her yard was looking good and she was happy and um so hire people that care hire people that are insured uh you know that carry workman's comp they provide for their workers our workers get paid well too and anybody that works for me if i, if I had to pay you cheap i don't want you and uh, so, anyhow, thank you very much. Thank you so much, Renee. I just learned so much. <laughs> um, gosh, this is just one of those incredible things about festivals like this. That I had so many questions that I've had for a long time about my fruit trees at home that were just answered by this brilliant human being. Um, so if you have any questions for Renee, uh, Renee will be over here under the blue tent along with Bob Lloyd, who spoke earlier about permaculture, what it is and what you should know about it.